Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I'm down here in the basement bait shop. I got a heater going because it is awfully cold out. It's snowing outside right now and it is the beginning of April here in Wisconsin. So some of you guys are fishing for spawning bass down south while the rest of us up here are dreaming of fishing for spawning bass. But I wanted to do a quick video to talk about some of my favorite pre-spawn cranks because no matter where you're at in the country, the most of us are still going to be fishing for pre-spawn bass or at least have a lot of fish that are in the late stages of pre-spawn moving up to spawn. And one of the best baits to catch these fish is a shallow running crankbait. So I want to share with you my five favorite pre-spawn shallow running crankbaits and the exact colors that I really like to use them in. Uh, these are baits that for me have won a pile of money and they're ones that I can almost always fall back on and generate some bites even when the fishing's tough. So let's dive right into these. Each of these, I'll give you the, uh, the name, the model. I'll put links in the video description in case you want to check them out at Tackle Warehouse. Great way to support the channel is to do your Tackle Warehouse shopping uh, using my affiliate link. So I will put links up for that. Um, but ultimately, guys, these are great baits, and I'm going to tell you when and where I like to throw them. Today's video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app, which will help you select the best fishing places in the lake with features like the lake level, the current flow, the top baits tool, which will help you select the best baits for certain locations throughout the lake. Whether that's a clear water, stained water, dirty water, it'll choose the best bait for that location, provide you with all the information like what structure, what retrieve, different reel, all of the information that you need to catch the fish. This is in the app. The cool part about this app though, is it's not just based on areas. It does provide you with specific tournament winning data that has been collected to help you figure out your best choices for baits and locations for whatever region of the lake it is that you wanna fish. On top of that, not only does the app provide you with best locations, it gives you water clarity as well. So maybe you're on a lake like Lake follow, where there is a bunch of different water clarity located throughout the entire lake. This will help you identify the clearest portions as well as the dirtiest portions of the lake. Plus the deep dive app has now added the wind effect map, which is gonna take all of the different wind conditions for the past couple of days and show you what banks on the lake are being hit the hardest. They also have inflow points that show you different places throughout the lake where your water is being flushed into the lake through different ditches and creeks and rivers, providing you with high percentage places to fish and letting you know what parts of the lake are going to be the best areas after a rain. Check out the Deep Dive app to help you become a better angler. All right, so the first one I've got here might not be what a lot of you guys are thinking. This is going a little bit old school. This is a Rapala Shad Wrap, a size 7. This is one of my all-time favorite fish catching baits, not just for bass, but for many, many different species. I've caught tons and tons of walleye on these. I've catched a lot of northern. I've caught musky. Uh, they are just great fish catching tools. You can see this is one I pulled out of the tackle box. I actually caught a pile of fish on this at Cherokee Lake a few years ago to the point where you can see I really wore it out in the back. It actually started pulling apart, but it held up just fine. I caught a pile of, pile of smallmouth on it. That was an event where the smallmouth were pulling up, and this was a bait they were having a hard time resisting. Uh, this color is their bluegill color. It does not really look like a bluegill to me. It looks very much more like a bait fish, but it does have the bluegill markings. Uh, I think they actually might call it red ear. I'll put the exact color in the description, but absolute dynamite bait. Now for me, I really like throwing these when you've got fish that are setting up along pea gravel type points or, <coughs> or some of your rock transitions. Uh, generally speaking, it's a very good bait. Also, when you have cold front conditions that move in, because it's such a tight wobbler, it's not a big wide wobbler that really is this big brash bait. It's very, very much a tight wobbler that generates strikes when the fishing is tough. Uh, so you got to have 
an old school shad wrap. Uh, size 7, size 5, you can go up to a size 9. Great fish catching bait. <clears throat> Another one that I absolutely love, you guys have seen me talk a lot about this bait. This is the <coughs> Berkeley Dime 6. This is their Swamp Red Swamp Craw color, I believe is the exact name of it. Red Swamp Craw, uh, kind of little greenish back, bright red sides. Absolutely killer bait when you're talking about some off colored water. So if you've got some stain coming in where you've got, it's almost muddy, but not really muddy, this color just stands out extremely well, generates a ton of bites, and I have yet to really find a time and a place I don't like it, but one of my absolute favorite times to throw it is when the wind is really blowing well. This is the best casting little crankbait you're gonna find. You can chuck this thing into the wind with no problem. So when conditions are not great from a wind standpoint, this is one of the first ones I'm gonna grab just to, just because of how well it casts. Uh, but I've had some really good finishes on that guy. Another one, pretty similar bait. This is a Rapala DT6. Uh, this is the Caribbean Shad color. I call it Parrot, because if you've been using a lot of those baits for a while, Parrot is very similar, except you don't pretty much have that silver scale going down the side. Uh, great bait at generating strikes when you're fishing around uh, shallow flats where you maybe got some isolated stumps, isolated branches. And the reason I say that is it is a balsa bait, so it floats very well. For me, I like to fish it when I'm, you know, I bump it into a stump, let it float up, and it floats a lot better than a lot of your other crankbaits, and that can be a key to generating strikes. Um, you know, these baits do not run that deep. Again, this one is like a five or six footer. So I'll be fishing it along a lot of your shallower spawning flats. You know, the areas that uh, tend to uh, be a little bit darker bottom, but tend to have some debris just scattered, whether that's a branch or a stump, maybe you've got some uh, pad stems or some bad roots. That can be a great bait to pull through those areas. Very good, again, at generating those strikes on some of your tougher days. A little tighter wobbling, not a big loud bait by any means. The next one is this guy right here. This is the M65 8A by Duo Realis in the red tiger color. Just a killer bait. Good luck trying to get them. They are very, very difficult to find. This is a bait that I started throwing after watching Roy Hawk catch them at Lake Martin in Alabama several, several years ago. Uh, in extremely muddy water and that's where I really like to throw it. It is a very bright colored bait It is a loud bait and from that standpoint, it's a wide wobbling bait. So when I've got Conditions where I have a lot of color in my water almost to the point of being muddy But I know a lot of fish are moving up I'm gonna be throwing this up and around any shoreline cover that I can find generally you're talking your rock transition banks and your laydowns that are on them, but this is one of those baits that if the if the water colors are bad, or the you know you've got dark water color, this is the one I'm gonna pick up. I've caught a lot of really big fish on this guy and love this bait very much as well. And then the last one, guys, you cannot forget about the old Phantom Green Wiggle Wart. This is an absolute must-have bait. Uh, man, they're discontinued. Very hard to get, and you're gonna pay for them when you do find them, but there's a reason this bait just catches them. You know, I can assure you guys that the paint scheme on this is about as close as you're gonna to get to a lot of the young of the year crayfish that are coming out of their hibernation state uh, down in the Ozark region. I've caught a lot of crayfish that actually have those little orange spots on the bottom, but they're almost like a white translucent green. And this bait just does a phenomenal job at catching them in that region. Now, I catch them all over the place fishing it, but I got to have a wiggle wart. Uh, just a very wide wobbling, great bait at deflecting and generating those reactionary strikes out of the fish. And man, you cannot not have a wiggle wart, in my opinion, especially when that Water temp is going to be in that upper 50 degree range. It just can generate a lot of good strikes for you for uh, all the different species of bass. But those five baits in those colors, I have lots and lots of them because I throw them all the time. 
Uh, that parrot color, you know, is another one that if you're fishing a little dirtier water can be an absolute killer bait. But do not overlook any of these. If you don't have them, I highly suggest getting them and trying them, especially if you're living on some lakes where the fish really do start to set up well on some of your transition type banks. Uh, you know, so a lot of your highland impoundments, some of your lowland impoundments as well, uh, or some of your river type fisheries where you've got some current flow and you get some good secondary channels and channel swing banks and that type of thing. Gotta have these baits. So hopefully this helps you catch a few extra fish. Um, I've had several of these baits tied on all spring, to be honest with you. I have had not even cut them off my rod from lake to lake to lake. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow.